There are a couple of things on the importance of sterile soil. I assume you are either preparing to plant seedlings or you have some seeds in pots and will soon have seedlings to care for. For peppers and tomatoes, I just planted yesterday the oldest of my eggplant seeds. Eggplant takes the longest and the old seeds take longer than the new ones. If you want your peppers to come up quick, they take a warm, a real warm spot. Mine jumped, some of my seeds jumped out of the ground in three days. Mind you, they were broccoli in on my heat mat. So heat makes a difference. We're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about health issues for your seedlings. Once they come up, the focus is getting them to thrive and to keep them alive. Um, we're talk, going to talk growth promotion, we're going to talk proper transplanting, and then transi transitioning to outdoors. And if any of you have seen this, or any funkiness at the stem, if you've seen them falling over like that one is, you've got damping off. Damping off is not a disease, it's caused by, and I looked at the list, and it is such a long list of funguses that it could be anything, but they, they all attack tender seedlings. They prefer moist environments, crowded plants. If you've started with sterile soil and sterile pots, you've got to start there. Um, doesn't mean you're home free, but it means you're 99% of the way. So you're going to see a stem collapse like this one, the stem right at ground level and the plants will just flop over. There's nothing you can do. They're gone already. What we can do beforehand, as I said, sterile soil. Commercial potting soils are supposed to be sterile. I do not take a sterile environment for granted in my potting area um, because it's kind of a multi-purpose area. It, when I have to store potting soil, I cover it that both keeps its moisture level proper and keeps extra whatever might be in the air from getting into it. When I transplant, um, if I'm taking something out of a seedling pot and putting it into a bigger pot, I might use what's in that cell, but I don't use those cells for anything else. If I've got leftover soil from that set of seedlings, I dump it in a bucket and take it out to the compost pile or I put it in a summer container or something that's going to be outdoors anyway. Um, especially if, if it's green, because sometimes they, they are, because mine get a lot of light um, with their moisture. If I'm uncomfortable at all, that soil does not get reused. As far as pots are concerned, if you are buying commercial plots, they should be okay. If you are buying commercial drink cups, if it's clean enough for food, it's clean enough for your plants. Research has not showed anything less than 10% effective yet. I don't know if anybody's tried it. We know 10% works. That means one pint of water or one pint of bleach to nine pints of water. Um, that is a 10% bleach solution. Now for me, it would be I'm talking quartz because I have a several gallon bucket that I can just dunk a whole lot at a time. It's a lot of bleach, but it's cheap compared to losing plants. Sterile, sterile, sterile. Your pots can be anything. Um, we have the cell pots, we have a peat pot, we have yogurt cups. I tried one year folding up around a two by two um, little newspaper pots, just as long as they're clean. Clean containers don't spread disease. Okay, watering is probably for me the biggest struggle. I have played with lights that are hot. I've played with lights that are warm. I have played with air moving over my plants and it all affects your water. I also fight fungus gnats because I bring plants in to overwinter in the house. And so watering, watering is critical. You need enough water to be moist, but your plants cannot tolerate standing in water. As I said earlier, cleanliness is 99% of your damping off problem. The other 1% is you can still have wet problems and fungal problems. 
if you have water standing in your pots. So your pots, if you're making your own, pots should have adequate drainage holes. If you're using commercial pots, they've got enough. As it says there, if you're bottom watering, I saw someone who had the most wonderful thing someday I'm going to try. A great big bed he kept his plants in. Now this was outdoors. He was starting flowers outside late in the season. But he would run water into it. And he would bottom water all these pots. It was a huge tray. It was the size of a pickup bed. And he would run maybe a half inch, half inch three quarter inch of water in there. And he had a timer in 15 minutes, it pulled the plug and it drained all the water out. That's perfect for those pots. For these little pots, if I'm going to bottom water, I'll pull them out. Um, it, we, I want that water to disappear in five or 10 minutes. I don't want them to stand in water. Um, top watering, you water till they leak through and then you get them out of wet stands. And some of my early failures with wet stuff where I would saturate the pot that I'd trans transplanted something into and it never dried out enough for the plant to thrive. And I lost, one year I lost almost 100% of what I planted. Um, and I learned from that. And you don't have to make that mistake. Note the holes in the bottoms of those pots. Um, those black and white pots have nine holes in them. Each of those holes is about a half inch. The three inch square, uh, the black one, only has four, but they're about three eighths of an inch each. And it's a little bit smaller. The yellow one has four holes, has no, not four holes, about four holes that are three eighths and four more holes that are a little smaller. This is the kind of drainage, if you're making a pot, this is the kind of drainage you're comparing to with the commercial stuff. Now, do we have any other, do I have any other questions on watering? Yes, you do. Uh, oh. When should plastic wrap over new seed trays be removed? And is that when watering from the bottom begins? How to determine time to remove plastic based on seedling growth? I am presuming the plastic wrap over the pots or over the seedling trays is simply to keep it humid around the trays. Um, I wouldn't do that for very long. If your seeds aren't showing within a week, get it off there anyway. And if you're bottom watering with that on there, you, you're just, you've got a perfect breeding ground for fungus. Anything I've got at home that molds, no matter what it is, if it's moist and closed in plastic, goes fast. And your seeds are living things and they'll do that too. We have another question. After watering, I often notice when I pull out plug, it is only moist one half inch down. Is that okay or should I water more? You probably should have your whole cell damp. Uh, you need to water a little bit more because, well, for one thing, once you're, the moment your seed germinates, that root's going to start moving and you'll have a root longer than a half, that half inch um, in no time flat. And, and you may not even see the top yet. I would get the whole cell down. As, as I said, you water until it runs out the bottom or starts to leak out the bottom. That's all the questions we have. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's a fine it's a fine line between too much and too little. Um, my problem that I've run into most often is too much. But yes, once you get leaves up there, they'll tell you real fast if they have too little. You do have to watch the seedlings, especially on under the warmth. They do need to stay moist. Okay, I have had a question about when to fertilize. I always have questions every year. When should I fertilize my seedlings? You you can see the diagram of a, a bean seed which is a dicot like peppers and tomatoes are. In, in other words, it will put off two initial seed leaves. That big cotyledon is like an egg yolk. It has all the nutrition the plant needs until it forms leaves and can start to photosynthesize. What you see in those yellow ovals are those two seed leaves. They don't look anything like the leaves that are coming on. Um, generally, a seed leaf is just long and oval and smooth and sometimes kind of thick. 
those two, as long as that plant has those on there, it's probably going to be okay. Yeah, especially as long as those are the only leaves, it'll be fine. It doesn't need fertilization. Once you get two true leaves, and that would be the leaf that looks like the adult plant leaves, then the plant is starting to go into food production for its own growth. Um, the light is part of that, and the nutrients it draws from the soil is part of that. Two little bitty baby leaves, I'm not usually worried about it. Um, I try to transplant when the plant gets a little bit bigger and has maybe two pairs of leaves. And I don't generally fertilize seedlings until I transplant them. Um, by the time you've got four true leaves on there, usually you've got a big enough plant to handle the transplant. And as far as I'm concerned, the sooner I can get them into their real pots, um, the sooner I can get them someplace, I don't have to mess with them as much because a real pot will hold some water too. But you really do not need to fertilize your plants unless you have at least two pairs, well, at least two true leaves, um, usually two pairs. They'll manage until they have two pairs. And your plants, if they're hungry, you'll see it. They'll change color. It'll be time. Um, when we choose plants for the plant sale, um, and frankly, any other choice for those kind of big plants like tomatoes and peppers and squashes and cucumbers, um, a four to six inch plant really needs a 16 ounce pot. So 16 or 18 ounce, that's those big drink cups. If you've got a much smaller plant, a couple of true leaves, which I'm hoping we've got bigger than that for the sale, but at some point your plant will be only two true leaves. Um, that could go in a 12, 10 or 12 inch cup or equivalent size pot. And I start the teenies sometimes in little six, in, six ounce cups because I have a lot of yogurt cups and I can. I prefer to let a plant get pretty good sized in a seedling um, and then just put it right up into its finished size cup. It doesn't hurt it to transplant it twice, but it's a lot of work. So I only do it once. And this is just kind of an indicator. Um, I put in the 16 ounce size commercial cup with the, with the other drink cups. I would love to use commercial cups for the sale, but they're like 10 or 15 cents a piece. And that big fat ribbed one in the middle is a six cent cup. So I go to the effort of cutting holes in cups. I've tried a lot of things. I've used bent coat hangers to melt holes in. And sometimes I bend the coat hanger into a shape that'll cut a little circle out of the cup. I do it over my guest range with the range hood going because it smells awful. I have cut holes in. I have tried drilling holes in and I know some people do that. Nancy's had some success, some success that way. Um, for me, just, I found a wood cutting X-Acto knife blade. It's a little like the, the granny paring knife that's curved with the sharp edge on the inside. And it's a very slender little blade and it makes a nice cut. But an X-Acto knife blade is sharp and works well. Any X-Acto knife blade. Um, that is my favorite way to do it. And I have to do it in little, little runs because it makes my hands sore. It seems to work real well. And I get approximately, the, I get the equivalent of half inch diameter holes. In uh, you see that is kind of a leaf shape, but it, it approximates a half inch hole, which is kind of what these have three eighths or half inch in them. I did the math and you saw it on the side. You would have, if you used a quarter inch drill bit and drilled a stack of pots, you would have to use four times as many holes as if you use half inch holes. So my four half inch holes in the bottoms of the cups are usually enough for the drainage, unless I'm stupid with my watering. So you figure accordingly, roughly four half inch holes, three or four half inch holes, or that many more of the smaller holes. I have had cups that I would, I would, pick up and say, why are you not doing well? And look at them and realize it's because they were not draining.
simply because they were not draining. They got the care everything else did. So they need to be dry enough as well as wet enough. We started, you need at least up one pair of true leaves. My plants are much stockier by the time they have two pairs of true leaves. And they can go that long unless you've got way too many in a, uh, one of the little one inch seedling cups. You need to start with moist soil because roots are fragile and it's not good to dry them out. I have a, a coat hanger. I took to the sandpaper and sanded a point onto it. Um, bamboo skewers will work. Something with a point to it so you could pick the roots apart if you've got, say, three plants growing in, a, in your cell of your seedling tray. You're going to have to separate them gently. Remember, gently, they are tender. You put your moist soil in the cup you're getting ready to go. This is a good time for the little tiny pinch of fertilizer and spread the roots out a little bit. And for cabbages, for lettuces, um, most of those kind of plants for the squash and the cucumbers, you plant at the same depth it was in in its seedling cup. There is no advantage to planting it deeper except if you're worried about it flopping over. Um, you might do harm. You certainly won't do it any good by planting it deeper. So try to get it kind of where it started. And I have done this with cabbage. I've put them deep so they wouldn't flop over because I waited too long to put them in. And later on when we put them in the garden, I saw this poor little stem trying to protect itself where it had been in the soil and wasn't going to develop roots and wasn't going to do anything. Now, Peppers, tomatoes, eggplants um, will develop roots up the stem. They can stand being planted a little bit deeper. And for them, sometimes I do need that support. So you put them in, you gently get the soil around them so you can get them to stand up and stay standing up. And then you water them till it's moist. Again, the water starts to leak out of the bottom. Get them to somewhere they can go ahead and finish draining what you need to do or draining, draining what you need to drain out. Folks, this is the time to label your variety. I have had mystery plants at an awful lot of plant sales, and it usually comes because somebody didn't get labeled. If, if you've got 24 plants and you've got three varieties, now's the time to do it. You, you, all you have to do is whatever indicator you know. If you've got a, a big boy, you put two Bs on it. And that way you know the difference between, I don't know, an early girl, which would be EG. Um, whatever it takes for you to know the difference. When you transplant is the time to label. One variety at a time. Um, it saves a lot of trouble later. If you're doing it for your own garden, you only have one of each. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. Once they start bearing fruit, you'll know. And again, put them back in the kind of environment they came from for at least a few days, preferably about a week before you try to make any changes. I want to transplant, get them out of that cold frame, man. And it's, uh-uh. They go back under the lights for a little bit. I probably have to set the lights up, um, give them a little more height, but you let them settle in. Let them settle in. You don't want to start remodeling a house before you settle in. This is the big part, and this is probably where we could talk all sorts of ideas for quite a while. Um, hardening off is critical, absolutely critical. You know how first thing in the, in the spring, you get sunburned when you're out too long. Plants, plants do it too. It's just the UV, um, UV rays damaging tissue. And the plants don't survive that sometimes. I find that when I first put mine into the cold, into my cold frame, which has glass over it, I, I have to protect them for the first week I throw something over that glass for at least the middle part of the day. How much more so if you're setting plants out? So the hardening off process is taking things gradually you need to watch the temperatures because in the spring you might have a nice warm sunny day, but you haven't paid attention to the fact that there's a cool breeze blowing. And cool breeze is not bad. It's just, they're not used to it. And you have to kind of be aware of that. 
the big thing though is is sunburning and we'll get a beautiful warm day and you think your plants will love it and i'm only going to put them out for half an hour something happens it turns into 45 minutes or maybe a half hour middle of the day was too much it, gradually you need to move them in gradually um, if you've got a spare window screen that hasn't been hung yet and you can put it over the plants for the first week they're out if you've got, um, I have a lot of thin worn out sheets and that can be draped. If you've got a thin row cover, that can be draped. If you've got, say a lot of trees and some filtered light from all the bare branches. For that first week, you need to be very gentle with them. And you can increase the time after that first week, just week by week by week, a little bit more. Again, be aware of the warmth. If you're put on, putting them out with protection over them, the warmth can turn hot real fast. You, you just kind of have to keep an eye on them. They're real tender at this point. Hardening off is not only prevents killing them at this point, but it does help them get started a little quicker. I have wagons. Um, I have several wagons. You can get them cheap at the hardware stores about this time of year. I put plants in the wagon. I have a porch I can roll them under. I can roll them out for a while. I can roll them in for a while. Um, if you've got a little red wagon, if you've got a tray that's easy to move, but I don't like bending over and picking up trays. Um, again, there are various things you need to do, but the plants have to be hardened off. Now, here's my my easy way of doing this and i have played with so many things i do not have a lot where it's easy to put in a greenhouse otherwise we'd do that and be done with it my favorite technique is this one that's four straw bales arranged in a u shape this particular year i put concrete blocks at the front and cardboard on the bottom Last year, I simply had a pole across that, right across that straw bale, and threw a sheet of plastic over it. Four straw bales um, with three weeks of watering plants and warmth, those straw bales will start to rot and they will warm that space up. Um, that is my favorite. It is so easy. And when I'm done, the straw bales go to mulch in the garden, the compost pile. I'm always using straw and four bales will go away fast. That's my favorite. Um, other than the one that we permanently built with a concrete hole in the ground. But that works well. That I think was just, that frame I believe was simply a, um, <laughs> we had a pavilion that collapsed. And I set it up over a bed and threw a piece of plastic. And that one is the carport under the snow and same thing just I leaned I had a I had glass patio door to lean up and I had another one tied to the top too but this one to keep them the right temperature plastic cuts enough of the UV that they adapt very well in fact my cold frame against the side of the house generally has plastic thrown over it when I'm first putting the plants out in it because I'm first putting the plants out in it before it gets warm enough to be out in other spaces. The advantage of the straw bales is they are insulation. As you can see this side is to the south, the back of the frame is to the north. Do I need to explain that any further? <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. Grace, I, mm -hmm. you do have some uh, comments and questions that have come in. Okay, in one uh, moment. Another way you can insulate. If you have bags of leaves left from last fall, they can go against a side of something. That's it. Okay, questions? Well, one comment was, I have a wood burning tool, and I think I'll use that. Another mm. question, how much and how often do you circulate the air for seedlings? Is it okay from above? And that is something I didn't touch in our growth promotion section. Various of us have tried fans across our plants and above would work. Across the plants works too because that will strengthen them from the a little wiggle, kind of like um, we do get stronger from a little resistance. Thank you for that question. 
And where do you acquire bales? I don't know if Ace Hardware will have them soon. For a while, Ace Hardware carried them. Um, you could check with the big home improvement places. Feldman's out off K7 has them. Grass Pad has them. I would guess most of the garden centers should have them. If not right now, by the time you need them, they will probably have them. Okay. Next question. What millimeter of plastic are you using? What is the thickness? The heavy stuff is too heavy to deal with. I use whatever I can lay my hands on. Um, I have clear shower curtain liners I have used. My favorite is just, I think it's, I think it's three mil. 